एवरीवन आई एम मनाली रेशम वाला असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम एल जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फिजियोथेरापी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट लिम्फेटिक डिसऑर्डर्स इट इज़ अ पार्ट ऑफ सिलेबस फॉर फाइनल ईयर फिजियोथेरापी स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी एंड द सब्जेक्ट इज फिजियोथेरापी इन कार्डियो पलमनरी कंडीशंस अ फिजियोथेरापिस्ट प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन अ लिम्फेटिक डिसऑर्डर्स लाइक लिम्फोइडीमा बिफोर दैट वी नीड टू नो वॉट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ लिम्फेटिक सिस्टम सो लेट सी द एनाटॉमी द लिम्फेटिक वेसल्स दीज कंसिस्ट ऑफ थीन लेयर ऑफ एंडोथेलियम सिमिलर टू ब्लड कैपिलरीज बट मच मोर परमिएबल दिस अलाउज ड्रेनेज ऑफ टिश्यू फ्लूड्स विच कैन नॉट बी रीअब्जॉर्ब डायरेक्टली इन टू द ब्लड स्ट्रीम अदर बिकॉज ऑफ द रीजन एक्सेस अमाउंट और देर आर पार्टिकल्स दैट आर टू लार्ज टू एंटर इन द कैपिलरीज द फ्लूड और द प्रोटीन पार्टिकल्स विच वेन्यूल्स कैन नॉट टेक बैक The lymphatic systems dra- draws th- those particles and drain into the veins. The structure of the lymphatic system includes a network of lymph vessels and nodes are responsible for draining tissue fluid from tissue space and returning it to the n- venous network near heart. Lymphatic vessels accompany blood vessels and found in skin, subcutaneous tissue, muscles. fascia viscera and even in the intestines along the course of lymphatic vessels there are lymph nodes the lymph passes from lymph vessels then series of lymph nodes and then into the venous network which is going into the right atrium of the heart and from there it will be moving from heart to the systemic circulation back so in upper limb the lymph vessels draws blood into the axillary lymph node from where there is a subclavian trunk trunks which are left and right side in lower limb the lymph is drained into the popliteal and inguinal lymph nodes from there iliac lymph nodes and from there a lumbar trunk where it joins to form a cisterna chini and then into the thoracic duct we can see here the long lymphatic vessel in the middle of the figure the left subclavian and lumbar trunk then going into as a thoracic duct they both drain blood on the left side into the thoracic duct and on the right side the right subclavian trunk drain blood into the right lymphatic duct this right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct drain blood into the junction of jugular and subclavian veins here we can see on the left side the right lymphatic duct on at the junction of right internal jugular vein and right subclavian vein and here the curvy thoracic trunk duct inside the left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein let's see the lymphoedema Lymphoedema occurs when lymphatics are unable to remove protein rich fluid from the tissue. Normally protein passes through the walls of the arterioles and the fluid is reabsorbed into the venules while the lymphatic tubules absorb the remaining protein particles through the pores. Usually this lymphatic system works as a passive uh, movement. the fluid in the lymphatic system moves as a passive movement because of squeezing of lymph vessels between the adjacent muscles contraction some of the contractility also the lymph vessels possess they also have valves which will prevent lymphatics to flow back the definition of lymphoedema is that This is a collection of lymph in subcutaneous tissue due to an abnormality of lymphatic system. Lower limbs are mainly affected with this. The types of lymphoedema are primary and secondary. Primary lymphoedema is due to inherent abnormality of lymphatic system and secondary is due to damage to the lymphatic system causing obstruction to the lymph nodes. Etiology for primary lymphoedema female are more affected than male it can occur at any age for example at birth it is due to small lymphatics which may get dilated and tortuous at puberty it is due to hormonal changes and at later in the life it is due to deterioration of the lymphatic system the secondary lymphoedema 
in which there is obstruction of lymphatic system due to either malignancy for example breast cancer in upper limb and pelvic tumor in lower limb may lead to have lymphoedema of upper limb and lower limb respectively then radiotherapy to pelvis or axillary region especially after mastectomy chronic inflammation leads to fibrosis and occlusion of lymphatic system and last is filariasis which is caused by infection through mosquito bites which is very common in developing countries like india africa etc in which cases we may see lymphoedema in lower limb very frequently the pathology of lymphoedema obstruction or anatomical abnormality lead to protein molecules escape in the surrounding fluid the fluid stagnates and coagulates because of its increased protein content there is fibrosis and thickening of the skin occurring the changes are localized to subcutaneous tissue by the deep fascia the next is the clinical features of lymphoedema usually unilateral lower limb is affected swelling increases gradually in primary it begins distally and spreads proximally but in secondary type of lymphoedema it begins from proximal initially there is peating edema gradually it becomes solidified enlargement of regional lymph nodes in secondary lymphoedema is very common to be seen management can be either conservative or surgical majority of the cases are treated with conservative management so let's see conservative management in detail which will include physiotherapy support and advice to the patient physiotherapy will first include pneumatic compression therapy it is a machine let's see how it's work it consists of pneumatic pump and sleeve here we can see this is a pump and this blue one are the sleeves pneumatic pump consists of pressure control the unit of pressure is mmg or kilopascal it can be scaled by deflection of needle or knob around the scale here we can see the knobs which are giving a pressure control on and off switch and type control that is a ratio of inflation and deflation here it is a figure showing lower limb sleeve for this pneumatic compression therapy next is the sleeves sleeves consist of double layer of sealed polyurethane F uh, either it is a full for upper limb or full for lower limb or only for below knee lower limb one upper for upper limb it is a straight and for lower limb it has a foot shape as we can see at the end there is a foot shape it can be fastened either with a zip or velcro sleeves with more and air entry holes gives more even pressure next is pneumatic compression either it can be intermittent or sequential in intermittent there is the whole skin alternatively inflate and deflate while in sequential sections of the sleeve inflate and deflate in turning uh, turn giving compression to limb proximally uh, first uh, to the distal area then to the proximal area application of it we need to remove all the cloth and jewelry whatever the titan uh, band or anything we need to remove then limb should be well supported and elevated if circulation is restricted by sleeve patient must feel may feel pins and needle sensation it should be avoided by uh, maintaining a certain level of or amount of pressure assessment prior to giving uh, pct that is pneumatic compression therapy first we need to check the joint range of motion muscle strength we need to palpate the edema we need to check the tissue mobility we also need to measure the limb for edema like we need to check bilaterally before treatment just after treatment one hour later the treatment and in the evening so that we can see the effectiveness of treatment here are some of the measurements given for upper limb and lower limb for upper limb first we need to check at the axilla then 8 cm proximal to the olecranon process here is the olecranon process then 11 cm distal to the olecranon process at the level of wrist and at the level of web of the thumb same is for lower limb first we need to check at groin then 15 cm above the base of patella 15 cm below 
the apex of patella at the level of ankle that is at the level of malleoli and middle of the metatarsals pressure it should be usually same for upper limb as well as lower limb there can be either fixed pressure or variable pressure method we can use for fixed pressure there is 30 to 40 second of inflation and 15 second of deflation and in variable we can increase or decrease inflation inflation time even up to 60 seconds machine should provide same physiological condition as normal muscle contraction that should be kept in mind as the muscle contraction only provides lymphatic movement the plan of treatment can be like for first week begin with 40 mmhg for 30 minutes twice a day assess immediately and one hour later pressure is kept same and time is gradually increased until end of the week the dosage is 40 mmhg for one hour the treatment should be given seven days a week that means daily treatment should be given for the next week that is on the second week we can increase the pressure by 5 mmhg per day until 65 mmhg that is the maximum limit time can be one hour twice daily that is we are increasing the time of giving if pain is a complaint use low pressure and treat more frequently for example 40 mmhg three times a day or 30 mmhg four times a day Treatment can be given as an OPD, IPD patient by physiotherapist or at home by a relative. Next is soft tissue manipulation which is a very important part of physiotherapy. We need to apply massage to the shoulder region before treating upper limb with pneumatic compression therapy to the area which is not covered by the sleeve. We can give deep kneading, effleurage to the axilla, picking up and rolling up to the mobilizing tissue around it. Lastly, we can give finger and thumb kneading to the localized thickening. We can also give the same treatment near the pelvic region where the sleeve cannot give proper compression. Next is the exercise which is very important part. It is to aimed to aid removal of tissue fluid from subcutaneous tissue. Exercise program slowly uh, and limb should be in elevated position. It should be performed three times a day within 50 to 20 repetition of each exercise should be performed. Here are the some of the examples for upper limb we can start with the finger bending and stretching then wrist bending forward and backward we can also include uh, circling of the wrist we can do elbow bending and stretching out of it elbow bending and stretching out of it then uh, with sitting we can place both the hands behind the neck then behind the waist so that we can do internal external rotation also and we can allow bilateral circumduction of the shoulder joint for same like for the lower limb we can do toe curling ankle forward backward and circling movement knee slides on the bed then st straight leg rising from supine side line and prone line next is the support patient should have to wear elastic stroking or elastic bandages for 24 hours it should only be removed only during treatment and it should be starting for upper limb from the base of the fingers to the shoulder joint and for lower limb from the base of the toes to the groin advice to the patient they need to uh, use the limb as normally as possible so the functional movement can be gained as uh, normally as possible. Avoid any minor injuries even any kind of scratches on it because it may create infection over there and if infection develops we need to treat it with antiseptics. We need to avoid uh, giving injection on the affected side. Uh, we need to ask the patient to not to take hot baths because it may increase swelling so cold baths are allowed. We should uh, tell him not to wear tight bands or jewelry on the affected side. Don't keep limb in dependent position. For example, while sitting, he need to use a chair to elevate and support the limb or he can just place a hand uh, on the head for a while if he can, uh, he does not find any support and at night we can uh, advise him to elevate the end of the bed. We need to allow him, uh, we need to advise him not to carry heavy shopping bags or any suitcase or anything on with the affected low upper limb and uh, with the affected lower limb he may need to wear footwear which supports the foot the surgical management it is chosen only for minority of the patient especially with a gross edema and recurrent infection 
method is removal of excess uh, sieve fluid uh, one is that and another is create communication between superficial and deep uh, lymphatics uh, pre and post operative physiotherapy is essential as pre operative physiotherapy is similar to conservative treatment while post operative uh, physiotherapy aims to improve lymphatic flow and function of the affected limb uh, we need to elevate the limb active movements to increase circulation gait reeducation to improve function ultrasound pme also re can be helpful to mobilize this tissue other things can be similar to the conservative treatment here are the references thank you so much